Hello everyone, welcome to another BSP Lab session uh, using Scilab. Hi everyone, hello everyone. Hi everyone, welcome to another lab session uh, of DSP using Scilab. So in today's lab, I'm going to be discussing about uh, discrete Fourier transform and uh, how to do its spectrum analysis. So that is a program we have for you. And uh, before I get to uh, what is the discrete Fourier transform, I'll just show you the formula that we are going to implement. So this is the code, right? This is the equation that we have. And uh, I want to implement this equation as a Scilab program. So here, what are this uh, DFT formula represent? So this X of N is my input signal. So I've taught, I've taught in detail in my DSP theory about this discrete Fourier transform. You might want to go check it out if you want to know uh, if you want to understand this DFT better. But for uh, this programming purpose, I'll just um, uh, briefly talk about this and then we'll get to the uh, program. So this is my input signal. This is my number of samples. And then I have uh, my K and N. Uh, they are the sampling index where my K is the sampling index of my Fourier transform. And N is my sampling index of my input signal. Uh, this is a complex exponential this is my summation and this is my multiplication so basically what i can tell you is uh, in fourier transform i'm having i have to be, do it over n so when i this is my summation so this is going to be a for loop so when i do this for n i'm going to get for k right i'm going to get n i'm going to get different values and i'm going to sum those values uh, for different uh, k and then I'm gonna add it. So what basically is happening is my x of 1. So let us say k is 1 x of 1 is gonna be equal to x um, and this is my let's say a four point sequence My x of 1 is gonna be x of 0 x of 1 x of 2 x of 3 right and it's gonna have four values This is k here is gonna be 1 and then we are gonna add those four values 0 1 2 3 for my k equal to 1 then for my x of 2 which when when k is 2 i'm again going to have my x of 0 1 2 3 and these are going to be multiplied with complex exponential where my k is going to be now 2 and then i'm going to add them to get my x of 2 so this is basically i'm going to do uh, this is how i'm going to write that uh, program for your fourier transform and let's get to the programming part now so this is the equation that we are trying to this is the equation that i've just shown you and here it has to be a minus so exponential of minus 2 pi by n into kn good so uh, let me clear my workspace and how many points i'm gonna have my dft for so i'll just uh, use you know, I get, it can be any numbers so let me just start with eight right just a small number and then uh, my discrete sampling index so why i am doing this so this is very important so why i'm doing this is i just want you to uh, I, I want to do the spectrum analysis and when i do the spectrum analysis i cannot do the spectrum analysis without having a signal with a frequency right and that is exactly what i'm doing here so i am taking my time duration my x-axis for my signal to be between 0 to 1 and the step size to be 1 by n so in this case it's going to be divided into eight uh, non-integer indexes but you know just for programming sake we can keep it as non-integer right and then um, they are going to be divided into a step size of 1 by 8 between 0 to 1 that is your discrete sample indexing and now the cycle so let me uh, start with just one cycle so how many cycles does my sine wave or what is the frequency of my sine signal or my sinusoid what is the signal frequency of this periodic signal that i'm going to plot here that is given by two percentage star two pi d star xt star cycles all right so here my frequency is going to be one cycle and the duration is one second so the frequency is 1 upon 1 that is equal to 1 so as the number of cycles changes so this is the number of cycles right number of cycles divided by the x duration x axis duration and uh, in my case that is equal to 1 right now it is 1 upon 1 is equal to 1 so this is my sine 2 pi xd into cycle so this is going to take care of my input signal being periodic and uh, that's going to have some uh, 
effect on the spectrum analysis uh, that I will be able to visually show you and uh, explain it to you. All right, good. So let me just plot our input signal XD comma X. X is my input and XD is my axis. And then I'm going to the Fourier transform. Okay, so these are the Fourier transform steps. So I'm initializing the Fourier transform to be N comma N, right? So I'm doing this because uh, how I intend to do this, there are two ways I can do it. I can do it with a single loop. I can do it with a double loop. I am using the double loop so that I can explain it to you better but you can even use a single for you know, and you can finish it off uh, with just a single uh, looping. So the first loop is having two fours for K and for N. So we have seen in our uh, diagram or in our equation I have my N variable and I have my K variable. I am using the same notations here. So my K represents the Fourier indexing and my N represents my uh, input signal indexing. All right, good. So that is my Fourier indexing and my input signal indexing. That is your X and N. And now I am doing, what I am doing is, I told you, right, I am going to add this. Good. So X of K. So basically, uh, first the inner loop will run when I uh, right the inner loop runs first so inner loop runs for n equal to 1 is to n so the inner loop runs first and when I run the inner loop what do I get I get my x of k to be what 1 comma n right and then I compute the values so this is guy this k is going to have value 1 and n is going to go from 1 to n and i'm storing all the values i'm storing the values in 2d so i can uh, that is what I, I can do this in this manner okay so if i do it in this manner then i don't need this loop understood it's clear right so i don't need that if i do it in this manner so if i do it in this manner my x of k is equal to this and i'm uh, doing for k and then I get my values. So this is one way to do it. So I can, I'll write it here. I can use X K instead of X of K comma N because I am using this to show you the complex and imaginary plot. So I'll, I'll let it come. So that is a much, much easier uh, if I want to do that. So I'm doing this, so which means each value of n is computed and stored. So each of my n value is stored. So this is going to be a two dimensional matrix of zero of n comma n. Understood? So that is what is happening here. And now I'm going to my second. So that is my first loop. So it's going to do this exponential of minus two pi j. Uh, here uh, i is your imaginary variable uh, k minus one into n minus one upon n. All right. And that is uh, how I compute this. And then this is going to be a two dimensional matrix because every value of n is getting stored. I don't want to store every value of n because I have to add all the values of n. And that is basically I'm doing here. So for the same value of k, I'm adding all the values of n. So I'm doing this inner loop. So here, what I'm doing is for same value of k, I am adding, I'm adding all n values good so this is our second loop which is not needed if you use the uh, x of k in the first place so if you use it x of k here then you don't need it because it's gonna add itself and uh, over put it on the same index it's gonna keep appending to that x of k so now I am doing this line, which I would have, which I which I should have done here. I am doing it as a separate loop, and then I get my y, which is gonna be my Fourier transform. So I am going to plot my y, and I am plotting not just y because my y is gonna be a complex variable, complex valued function. I am taking the magnitude. So this magnitude is computed using your ABS absolute gives the magnitude of your Fourier transform, and then I am plotting the magnitude. All right, 
so let me just run this program now and i'm getting okay it's not making much sense here because uh, it's a very simple let me just make it a uh, little bit b before it was 64 and let me go for a three cycle uh, no uh, let me go for more than three let me go for like say 10 cycles so let me just make it 10 cycles so that 10 is the frequency now and uh, i have to refresh the, this just quickly i'll come yes now you see here what do i have so this is my sinusoid this is my sine signal and it's having 10 cycles 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 it's having 10 cycles or my frequency is equal to 10 because my time duration is only one so 10 cycles in one second so that is also my frequency of my signal and now you see this transform here you see this Fourier transform what do i have is i have a peak at 10 and you can guess it right you know you must have guessed it that is the frequency peak so which means your Fourier transform highlights the frequency of the signal it emphasizes on the frequency of your signal so your 10 is coming as a peak because that is a frequency because this axis here your x-axis is k so i'm gonna have k from 0 to 64 because i am doing my 64 point dft so that is what i'm doing here so for my 64 point dft my k is gonna have from 0 to 64 and i can see that at 10 my k my 4 e transform is having a peak which is i uh, know which is a very good thing because now if, if i want to find the frequency from my left side i cannot tell what is the frequency i can tell in this case because it's having 10 cycles and one second i can just count and tell you very easily but uh, not all the time you can do it in this manner so you apply the Fourier transform and you are going to get the maximum peak at the signal frequency right at the place of your signal frequency and now what is this peak tell me so this is my i call this peak at my it is it, it has to be at 54 and it is 64 minus 10 so i go backward from 64 and i get a peak at 54 and this is called as my folding frequency so what happens is if i fold this for a spectrum right i have to fold it at 32 because it's a 64 um, for dft 64 point Fourier transform i fold it at uh, 32 and then what will happen is this frequency spectrum at 10 this frequency peak at 10 and at 54 will come and align with each other so this is why we call this as a folding frequency and my frequency folding frequency happens at 10 places from the last so that is the 64 towards uh, 10 places means uh, towards the left that's going to be 54 so this is how your frequency spectrum this is the spectrum analysis for your fft now uh, let me uh, we can do many things with this let me just um, increase this because i can now scale it up to anything i can do it 256 and then i can do 25 cycles so which means i'm gonna have it at 25 and 256 minus 25 that is somewhere around 225 right so that is what we will be having let's quickly do it and now let us see what we have here yes see I am having now 25 cycles if I count it right I'll know I'll be having 25 peaks here and look at this Fourier spectrum a peak at 25 a sharp peak at 25 and at again 225 right give or take uh, not exact but this is your spectrum analysis so your Fourier spectrum uh, gives a lot of information about the frequency of the signal if I have to tell all right and that is one of the spectrum analysis and uh, if I, I have another spectrum analysis i have for you is why i use those two loops is to show this complex and uh, real uh, to do, do the complex plot and i am going to get the complex plot to be somewhat very nice circle right so i'm going to take it as uh, n equal to 32 then i'll do the plot now you can see um it's very well I'll, I'll take just uh, 16 okay because no more number of cycles okay so i'll keep the cycle as two so i want to show a much simpler diagram but if i redo it you will get yeah see nice so i have now my two cycles and then my n equal to 16 so my n equal to 6 so now i have my eight and two cycles i don't see the two cycles here okay fine so that is your 
good so that is your response for this so for 32 i get this pattern so this is the complex plot so this is the plot of your real and imaginary axis and now the third thing i'm going to plot is i'm going to show you when the value so this is the Fourier transform i'm plotting it only for this eight so when the value of k so this is the value of k and when this matches the frequency so let me make my frequency to match it so let me keep my frequency to be eight and let me keep this to be 64 and let me just plot my signal and you see here when this value when this eight matching, which is nowhere close to the frequency of the signal then you get something different so which means at the why, why i'm showing this is that peak that peak we are getting right that peak we are getting at k is equal to the when k is matching the frequency that is where you are getting the peak in the spectrum in this magnitude spectrum and that is happening and it can be seen here that all this you know at, at that position i am getting a very accurate representation of the signal it somewhat represents the signal that is what it means so when k matches your frequency there is something happens some resemblance or it emphasizes your signal at that value of k so that is the third analysis i can tell you right so this is the spectrum your complex spectrum uh, your plot and to understand this complex spectrum please watch the video i have on dft spectrum analysis that's a lot of animations i've you know i've gone into that and that is a lot more informative but uh, the program as it is should be clear for you and uh, for next uh, session i'll be back with the fft fast fourier transform okay thank you see you bye